How is it playing with with wit uh, as opposed to James in terms of working with the, the, the a singer and like? You know. Well, you know the the thing the thing is with with wit. I mean he. He is he is a front man, front man in, in the classical sense, whereas James, you know, always had his guitar. Mm -hmm. So I mean the big difference is when James stops singing, he plays guitar. When Wit stops singing, you know, he kind of you know, has something something to do. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's just interesting in that Wit, he's an amazing character. He is he is so selfless. You know, and so, like, just like, yeah, you see, okay, I knew he was the right guy to be in the wedding band when I saw him give his vocal monitor to John Theodore to use as a drum monitor. I've never seen that ever in my life. The singer giving the monitor to the drummer. drummer. That just doesn't that's, happen. That's, that's, that's that pretty just cool. doesn't yeah, happen. That was documented. <laughs> yeah, that's just like, and I was like, whoa, whoa. Did no you ego. see that? He cares. I, I said, Rob, did you see what just happened? <laughs> wow. And like John Theater is like sitting there with a smile. And, like, uh, and, 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 and Witt's sitting there with a big old grin going, yeah, man. Uh, it's cool. I can handle it. And, uh, and just, I love that, you know. I, just, awesome. I, lo I love that he's, you know, it's just, he's so much like the anti-frontman, you know, wit. Even though when you see him, he's fully engaged in being a frontman. Right. You know, off stage, he doesn't have that, that frontman kind of persona, you know. And he's not like a David Lee Roth who carries that frontman persona with him all the time or, right, right. or used to do that you know he used to do that I mean you hear about a lot of these singers carrying their frontman persona with them 24 hours a day you know it's like fucking turn it off must be exhausting right, right. oh yeah. yeah but you know some people are just into it sure yeah. you know and, uh, some people believe that that's what they're they're expected to do but you know what he's he's not of that that, that caliber I mean he's above all that stuff and you know he's a, he has a great voice, and he has a real sincere love for the music, like we all do. We just sit around, and just talk about music. You know, it's, it's he the greatest thing. He had kids up on stage too. He saw the kids were engaged yesterday. I think it was right before you arrived with uh, Iron Man. They're, they're mm -hmm. rehearsing Iron Man, and the kids were going crazy. Mm -hmm. And so he called all the kids up on stage and gave them each a chance to do that Iron Man part with the yeah. right at the beginning. And oh. the kids were just See? beside themselves. See? Right? See? And you can see, I mean, he was smiling yeah, and happy, see? and it just made the whole see? the whole thing a better a, yeah. a better place. See, he's the right guy for for this kind of band because you know Rob and I were super, super, super into the music, but we're nice guys. Also, I like to think that we're a couple yeah, nice yeah, guys, yeah, 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 yeah. and we, you know we want guys. we want more nice guys yes, around us. Absolutely. And so, Wit, Wit, he definitely qualifies. You know, John Theodore definitely qualifies. Joey Castillo definitely qualifies. And I have to say, Joey does a great job filling in for John Theodore. And you know, as far as I'm concerned, fucking he was killing it last night. Well, so. it's just like you know, and I was always. Always intrigued by the Allman Brothers and mid-90s King Crimson because right. both those bands had two drummers. And, you know, the concept of two drummers is, has always been, like, kind of, like, mystifying to me, you know? You can't forget the Doobies as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Doobies the had two, yeah, two drummers as well. That's right. And, you know, the concept with King Crimson when they had two drummers is they also had two bass players. And it was really interesting to hear Robert Fripp talk, talk about it. And the way he talked about it was having two power trios on stage. And I thought, wow, that is, that's, that's, a, trippy, that's yeah. a heavy, heavy, heavy concept. And so, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to explore other things with the wedding band, you know, things that might not be really, really that significant. But things you know that I'm just kind of just curious about myself, like what would it feel like to play with two drummers? I've never done that, and I've always been curious. And so, you know, maybe one day we can get both Joey Castillo and John Theodore to play in the wedding band, and that would be that would fucking be nice. incre that incredible. Would be nice. I see a brass section <laughs> in, the, yeah. in this in this band's future. Well, you know, I'm just saying. <clears throat> 
brass and woodwinds can be heavy if they're used right, oh, mm. used correctly. They can be super mega heavy. Well, I mean, if oh, you're yeah. doing a whole bunch of fun stuff, it just makes sense to have a nice horn section. Yeah, right? absolutely. That'd be killer. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And uh, um, yeah, it's just uh, uh, I just recorded the the, the piece of music uh, that I wrote with my wife Lonnie in in Paris with. Uh, a, the bass player who plays in this French progressive band called Magma, mm -hmm. and this guy was—he was just a friggin' monster. He can play the song better than I could. Mm -hmm. I was a little embarrassed, mm -hmm. but he—he um, uh, he was great. He's a, a great guy to play with, and he, and and Rob turned me on to him because Rob couldn't actually play uh, on the track himself, and we uh, well. My wife and I, we also wanted to bring in a cello player for the track. Nice. So we got in a cello player, and you know, as, as we were recording, I was looking at the bass player, I was looking at the cello player, and I was hearing things, I was thinking, wow, this is kind of similar to what it might be like having two bass players. But you know, one of them has a, a completely different tim timbre, you know, tonal space. Yeah. But you know, I thought, oh, wow, it's full. And it just kind of like brought me a little bit closer to that concept of like having two power trios on stage. Yeah, you kind of had yeah. it right there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, how did uh, how did Doc Coyle uh, get involved? In, uh, well, we've known Doc for a while, of course. When, since when he was in uh, uh, God Forbid, and he like he, you know, he's a, a great auxiliary guitar player. He's he, he's great in yeah, that. Yeah, he's, he's got it, man. The vocals yeah. and everything. Yeah. Wait, well, yeah. I like the fact that he, he like he, he knows his chords. He, he you know he's out of the sandbox yeah. in terms of chords. A lot of rock guitar players never make it out of the sandbox in, in terms of chords. You know, right. you tell them to fucking play a thirteenth chord, they're like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, for me, it's important to know all yeah. as many chords as possible. Right. I've always <laughs> been that way. Always. Yes. And chords to me are freaking incredible mystery. I mean. You know, a grip can like hold so much emotion, so much tonal quality, and su suggest so much melody. Right. Just like one freaking chord. Right. You know, it's just, it's 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 amazing to me. But uh, like Doc, he knows his. You know, he if I tell him, give me a diminished chord or an augmented chord, he'll fucking play it, which is great. And he uh, he's really great at at, at, at adding kind of like a, a, a certain kind of spice to, to all this stuff that we're playing. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is his first show with The Wedding Band. Um, we brought him in as kind of like an like, auxiliary player. Right. And did a great job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, and, and, and sound check fun. sounded good, yeah. Yeah, sound check was he, great. And he, and he, yeah, he's the right guy, for, for again, for this sort of situation. He's a nice guy. He cares about the music, you know. He, he goes deep in it. He's not afraid to go deep in it. And, uh, and you know, just fucking just go for it. What are you guys, what style are you looking forward or what covers are you looking forward to the most uh, in terms of playing? Like, is it like I, I love to just start jamming and just see where it goes. And these funk songs are, are good vehicles for that. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, just start jamming and see where it goes. Because a, a lot of the funk, uh, uh, structures are, are kind of open for just like jamming and improvising and um, yeah I mean we have other songs we've, we've, we've played too but you know the songs we're playing tonight are just like the kind of like the songs that we uh, we, uh, we get together for a shorter set what I, I really would like to do is just like turn it into into something that that the Rob and I can do when we're bored and we feel like we need to work. Because, you know, Metallica only really plays 55 shows a year, and we only record on certain, certain, you know, certain periods of time. So there is downtime, and, you know, because of just how, of the person I am, the musician I am, I crave playing with other people. And Rob's not that much different, you know? That's why we, we were playing together. We're just, we, we crave jamming. Mm -hmm. And so it's a good vehicle for us to jam with other people, you know, fucking just improvise, play stuff that, that we don't usually play, you know, use it to explore. Uh, you know, if, if something comes up, 
uh, and, and, and Rob needs a, you know, a, a band for an event, you know, I'm there for him. You know, I needed, I nice. needed, you know, I needed a band for this event, and you know, these guys are, are, are here for me. It's a great thing. Is there anyone who you have in mind that you call upon um, uh, that you were that you're thinking of in, in the near future, or just, just any? I guess anyone or. Well, I want I, you know I would like to find someone who's a multi instrumentalist who can who can play uh, uh, keyboards, uh, violin, cello, and flute. That would be incredible if we can find. Where's that wave pool? <laughs> Where Let's is do it? it? Where is it? <laughs> serious, I didn't know there was a wave pool here. <laughs> Detour. Detour. Oh, no, we gotta wear shorts. Have go. you guys been there? I haven't <laughs> surfed in like eight weeks. I'll go there fucking right now and start surfing. <laughs> start surfing? Amazing. Serious. Okay. Fuck. Short shopping, let's go. Yeah. It's the right weather for I'll fucking surf man. naked, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, let's shift, let's shift on to that topic. Let's <laughs> no, the surfing. Yeah. 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 I can't believe you guys have a wave pool. <laughs> we actually had a few, actually. Really? Yeah. Okay, well. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm going to have Part to. Part two. Yeah. I might be coming back here a lot. <laughs> <laughs> they want me to come back in like November, December, but it might be a lot sooner. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Playing today at the at the yeah. wave pool. At the wave, <laughs> the wave. <laughs> the live uh, live at the wave. Yeah. You know there are there. Are, uh, 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 so Kelly Slater has a wave pool down in Fresno and and has a a, a, a stage there, so that bands oh, can play. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. And so, yeah, I'm trying to get something going. With me.